Distributing the coronavirus vaccine has proven to be a major challenge, no matter what the setting. But imagine trying to get it done across the vast, sparsely populated state of Alaska. This morning, we take a look at two organizations in western Alaska that have been racing across the frozen land to vaccinate Alaskans in the thick of winter. Nancy Chen introduces us to some of those frontline workers and the unique ways they're getting to their patients. Far beyond the reaches of the nearest connecting roads, these villages of rural Alaska are only accessible by small aircraft or boat. But there are few latitudes too challenging for the doctors of the final frontier. People in rural uh, Alaska are vulnerable just like anybody um, in rural America. Dr. Katrine Bengard and her team from the Manilik Association cover Northwest Alaska, traveling at times hundreds of miles a day, including on sleds pulled by snowmobiles. We caught up with Bengard during one of her latest coronavirus vaccine runs, which started with a flight. We had to cross a river to get to town and the river's frozen right now. So um, we were able to go just right over top of the water, which was uh, kind of a fun experience and um, uh, pulled up to the clinic. A hop, skip and a jump. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Their itineraries sometimes include multiple villages in one trip as they provide health care to 12 federally recognized tribes. Their coverage area, the size of Indiana. Was this atypical, what you did today, or is this kind of a standard in order to do health care? This is how we get around up here. As Bengard's team and others navigate the rough Alaskan terrain, they visit the homes of those most vulnerable. They also distribute vaccines inside local clinics or on their chartered single-engine planes. Ready? Engine out. As well as on the tarmac, <laughs> patients rolling up on snowmobiles and ATVs. Wow. Dr. Alan Hodges is chief of staff for the Yukon Kuskokwim Health Corporation. There you go. You're all vaccinated. Which has inoculated about 6,000 people in southwest Alaska. Hodges calls it a race against time to get to as many people as possible, especially in communities where multiple generations live together. <laughs> there are so many challenges when it comes to getting these shots in arms. Why is it worth it? We have some of the highest case rates in the nation right now, and Alaska Natives are disproportionately affected by both hospitalizations and deaths. Um, so getting our population, which is primarily Alaska Native, vaccinated is, my, is right now my number one priority. Hodges has been a doctor in Alaska for nearly two decades. She's used to traveling to faraway villages without hospitals. But as for a challenge like this... Have you gone to these extents before? Not in this exact way and not for this exact reason. That extra effort includes holding the delicate vaccines in her lap on bumpy plane rides and making sure the doses stay at the right temperature. You can't refreeze it. That destroys the vaccine and we didn't want to waste a drop of this precious resource. So is that right that you put it under your shirt? Yeah, I tucked it into, well, between my shirt and my coat to keep it warm until right before we injected it. The wind can freeze things, things like that really fast, uh, and then it won't inject. The harsh and unpredictable winter days demand creativity and nimbleness. And with the constant possibility of getting snowed in overnight, healthcare workers have plenty to juggle. Just the logistics, um, making sure that the weather's cooperating, making sure that we have a, a pilot. We tried to go out to a village yesterday and we weren't able to get a pilot um, to go out. That's where community collaboration comes in, even from those who don't have medical degrees. This is probably one of the most important trips I've ever taken. Kurt Jackson is a water taxi captain who has now delivered vaccines twice. Nurses boarding his 32-foot aluminum landing craft to cross Kachemak Bay when poor weather prevented them from flying. I immediately got kind of choked up feeling like this is a first step, but it was also, it's going to be a bumpy ride. So a trip that normally takes us about a half an hour uh, that day took us about an hour just to slowly kind of crawl our way across the bay, um, just trying to be as gentle as, uh, with, with our precious cargo as possible. It's an effort that's paying off. Alaska now has one of the highest coronavirus vaccination rates in the country. This was Hodges after the first doses arrived. This is amazing. This is wonderful. I can't even tell you. Oh, I'm just overwhelmed at how amazing this is. What struck that sense of happiness in you? 
Like, you know, in Alaska, it's dark in the winter a lot. And we slowly start getting the light back this time of year, a few minutes every day. And that's what this vaccine feels to me. It's not automatic, you know, sunrise. But I, I tell you what, every day is a little better. Every shot we get in an arm is hopefully one less call we have to make to tell them they have COVID. A new dawn on the horizon in a long and difficult winter. For CBS This Morning Saturday, Nancy Chen, New York. There are communities all across the country that I'm sure could have lessons learned from, from this piece. And how, well, how well they did it. We're, worth noting, by the way, since it is Alaska, you might be wondering why they didn't use sled dogs, which is one form of transportation. We're told that uh, the ride was too rough, so the vaccine wouldn't hold up. Right. If they, use, they can use the snowmobiles and planes, but not sled. Although it would have been cool to get... Uh, <laughs> to have the dogs to, to, involved. To get a vaccination from a, something delivered by a sled dog, right? Good for them.